What is up, everybody? It is August. Yes, it's the 29th, 2023. And we're going to take another deep dive into programming. I did one maybe a week or two ago, and it was very warmly received. People seem to dig geeking out a bit on programming, which is great, because that's what I'm all about. And so Programming Nerds Unite. We're going to cover today the last week of training that we did, the five workouts beginning on Monday, August 21st, and going through Saturday, August 26th. So, in an ideal world, if you wanna learn about the stuff you're really interested, what you could do is come back to this video, or event. I'll eventually post it as a podcast as well, but write out those five days of workouts, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday, what the workouts were, and then if you're on the CrossFit Linchpin website or whatnot, you can look back if I happen to reference something that occurred previously into why that helped make a decision, and then you can kind of start to demystify some of the stuff around programming. But with no further ado, we'll, we'll jump in. Well, that's a lie. There's a bit more ado. There's just two cool things that I screenshotted that I want to give shout-outs to because shout-outs are awesome. The first is from Kurt L., and this is about the squats that we did last week, which is one of the days that we'll cover. And he got a new uh, five rep max of 220 pounds on a front squat, which is fantastic. And Kurt says, which, what's cool is his 10 rep max and, excuse me, his old five rep max used to be 195 pounds, and now it's 220 pounds. That's a significant jump, 195 to 220. So he's almost at 225, but couldn't quite get it. And this year I've made more ground on my front squat while performing it way less often than ever in my life. It's almost like the variance works or something. I think that is something, you know, we beat the drum about often here. You don't have to lift every day to get really strong. As a matter of fact, I think that's a terrible idea. Um, Doing it less frequently, but doing it intentionally so that you can really pour your heart and soul into it and giving the heavy days the respect they deserve that works and that makes people strong, not lifting in a mediocre fashion five times a week. The other post was from John B, who didn't front squat, he did sets of five on the back squat because he's got some stuff going on, which he says here. He says the front rack, because of ongoing neurological and shoulder issues, is possibly never happening again. Which, right, that sucks, right? But he's got a great attitude about it because you can always find something to do to replicate the movement. He says, I can still clean lighter weight, but front squats aren't happening for me anytime soon. So I went to the back squat today. I've never been a strong squatter and normally would not want to throw this, you know, this loading up here compared to the weights that some of you throw up, which are very impressive. But with all the health issues I've had, especially this last year, and with a lifetime back squat PR of 265 pounds for a one rep, and that was back when I was younger, and all I did was lift weights, by the way. This is some serious lemonade I made out of lemons today. So he back squatted 215 pounds for a set of five. Back, you know, compare that to his best ever in his entire life, one rep of 265 when all he was doing was lifting weights. And now 215 for five, not lifting anywhere near as much. So very cool and making good decisions since he can't front rack the bar. Thank you, Coach, and all of you in this community for allowing me to feel proud of days like this by convincing me over the last year that scaling is indeed cool. How awesome is that? Okay, so now we will jump into the workouts for all the programming nerds out there. And like I said, check it out, write it down, and come back to it. So on Monday, which was August 21st, we had a real gem. We had three rounds for time, 60 air squats, 30 GHD sit-ups, and a 1,500-meter row. And the purpose of this day of training was, right out of the bat, going long. The time domain on this workout for most people, depending upon how much you enjoyed it or didn't enjoy it, was anywhere from, on average, 35 to 45 minutes. So a long workout to start the week. And not just a long workout, but a long workout with no loading at all. So we had two gymnastics movements, and one monostructural movement in this. We also had below parallel was an intentional point of this workout as well. 
but in below parallel in big chunks of work with no external loading. So sets of 60 air squats, three sets of 60 air squats, right? Much different than how you do air squats on like a 20 minute AMRAP of Cindy where every time you hit it, you're doing you know sets of 15. This is three big sets of 50. And of course the midline blast there with the GHDs as well. So that started that on there, right? It's like you say, live your life in couplets and triplets, go heavy at least once a week, every now and then go long. There's your every now and then go long. Start off the week right, put a smile on everybody's face. So that was Monday. On Tuesday, the 22nd, August 22nd, we had a hero workout that everybody loves, DT. DT is very different than what we did the day before. So the day before, no barbell at all, zero loading. Gymnastics, gymnastics, monostructural. Now on DT, you've got five rounds for time of 12 deadlifts, nine hang power cleans, and six push jerks. So a barbell movement followed by a barbell movement followed by a barbell movement. So weightlifting, weightlifting, weightlifting. And time domains are quite different as well. Whereas on Monday, it was 35 to 45 minutes. For DT, depending on how you did, it could be anywhere from eight minutes to 14 minutes. So a distinctly different time domain and a distinctly different nature. Now it's all barbell, it's all loading. And we are and I, I would call DT for most people. It's 155 for the men, 105 for women as prescribed. I would say for most people, it's a heavy day at a high heart rate. Now, maybe you're just so unbelievably strong that that's a laughable load for you. But for most people, throwing around 155 for, or 105 for five rounds in that rep scheme is a heavy day at a high heart rate. So that's how I would also categorize it when I'm laying out the week's programming and finding out what days are light, what days are long, what days are classic heavy days, what days are heavy days at a high heart rate, what days are intervals, what days are whatever they happen to be, that's how me personally, I would look at DT. You don't have to look at DT that way at all. All that matters is you have a way as a programmer that is consistent and helps you classify certain things so that you can see where you've been you could see where you should go and where the road is leading you. So your system doesn't have to be the same as my system. This is just one I've developed over the years that works for me and you know, paying attention to the masses and what seems to be generally an average load, a light load, a heavy load, but just do whatever works for you. But point being, have a system so you're not doing just kind of you know random nonsense. So a heavy day at a high heart rate and then also doing some distinctly different things than we did the day before. So we're pulling from the ground with a barbell we have an explosive hip opening with the hang power clean and also on the jerk, and then you're going overhead. Now, there's most certainly hip drive involved with the rower as well, right? But it's not anywhere near the explosive hip drive pull from the ground with a loaded barbell that you're getting on DT, especially when you consider the fact that, you know, for just sheer, um, what is that? I'm losing my train of thought right now, right? Like the metabolic pathways and the various engines, right? So the longer in time domain something happens by its very nature, the power output goes down. Well, you're talking about nine hang power cleans in DT, relatively short, explosive, heavy loading. Yes, there's hip opening with what we did the day before on the rower, but every time you hopped in the rower, it was 1500 meters. So let's just call that six minutes of rowing every time you hopped on the rower. That's not super explosive with the old hip drive compared to what we're doing with DT and one has loading, one has no loading. So distinctly different there. And again, weightlifting, 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 and you've got the pull from the ground, you get the front rack and you're going overhead, heavy day at a high heart rate. Now we move on to Wednesday, August 23rd. I liked this workout. I'm not saying I did great at it, but I liked this one. Wednesday was four rounds for time of a 400 meter run, 12 chest to bar pull-ups and 12 burpees. Regular old school burpees, not over a barbell, not over anything, just old school burpees. So for this one, we've got no loading again. Imagine that gasp. We've had three days of training so far in the week and only one day had loading. How in the world is anyone gonna get fit or strong? Answer, 
very well and very effectively because we're not loading them down and beating them up every day unnecessarily. Don't give people what they want. Give them what they need. Give them what works. So this four rounds for time, 400 meter run, 12 chest to bar pull-ups, 12 burpees. I also liked that the number 12 for the chest of bars and for the burpees because it was a beautifully obnoxious number. It's a it's a little bit higher than you want, but it's not so high that it seems overwhelming. You're like, ah, it's an annoying number, but I can do it. But it's not so low that it's just a non-issue. And over the course of four rounds, those sets of 12 add up very nicely to by the end, you'll have done 48 chest bar pull-ups and 48 burpees. You know, in, in a lot of common workouts, you get a 2159 rep scheme, you're getting in 45 pull-ups in Fran or something like that. So this is gonna come out to 48 pull-ups in four sets of ch four chunks of 12 with the chest bar, which is really nice. Um, time domain for this one was anywhere from, depending upon how you did, 14 to 20 minutes. So the day before with DT, we were in the eight to 14 minute range. Now we're in the 14 to 20 minute range. So two of the three workouts of the week were 20 minutes or less for the overwhelming majority of the population. We've had one going long so far. And this one, the gymnastics was very different than we had on Monday. The gymnastics for this, chest of bar and burpees. The gymnastics on Monday was the air squat and the GHD sit up and the upper body pull that we had on Wednesday, the sets of 12 chest to bar, uh, that was very deliberate, right? Like, like everything else is. But let's take a look on what we've done recently for upper body pulling, and maybe that can help us decide as to why chest to bars were a good choice for Wednesday's workout. So we didn't have upper body pulling on Tuesday or on Monday. We go back last week, we had ring muscle-ups in Nate. It's great, and those are just sets of two, right? It's an AMRAP style. And so that's very different than four sets of 12 in the chest -a bar So we had chest -a bar on Wednesday, rewinding the clock, we had ring muscle-ups. Uh, before that, we had, if we're going for upper body pulling, we, had, we did Barbara, which is five sets of 20 on regular pull-ups. Before that, we had bar muscle-ups. So if you keep rewinding the clock, we're covering our bases really well with the different types of upper body pulling that we're exposing the athletes to the rep ranges, the time domains, and all of that. They're all intentionally laid out And that, even though we just chatted right there about upper body pulling, you could play the same game with below parallel, the same game with how we're going overhead, the same game with um, the monostructural component, all that good stuff. Because, well, exactly. On Wednesday, we had 400 meter runs in the workout. That's the monostructural component. Tuesday didn't have one, but on Wednesday, what was the monostructural component? three rounds and each time you hopped on the rower, not a run, and it was quite different. A 400 meter run on Wednesday, ballpark two minutes. 1500 meter rows on Monday, ballpark six minutes. So very different in the actual modality, running versus rowing, and quite different in the time domain. You know, one's a third of the time of the other. On Wednesday, excuse me, on Thursday, rest day. Absolutely glorious day. Who doesn't love a rest day? I certainly do. Then on Friday, you are, you are treated with a gift that you have earned. Because what have we had previously? We had three days training, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. And like I said, only one of those days had loading. Two out of the three days had no loading. So guess what? You're not feeling beat up from loading. And you haven't gone below parallel since Monday. And now it's Friday and you just came off a rest day. And what's the workout of the day? Five sets of five on the front squat. So if there's a way to set you up for success on five sets of five front squat, it's everything that I just laid out right there. And so, yep, we're going below parallel for the second time of the week and we're doing it in a classic heavy day. We're respecting the heavy days. We're not doing anything else. Beautiful warm up increase your working uh, your warm weight as needed hit your working sets with like two to four minutes rest between each if you so desire cool down stretch go home take the full hour get really really strong and that's why that works and below parallel quite different than what happened on monday here's five sets of five for as heavy as you can go versus three sets of 60 unladen air squats on monday there's a big difference there we touched a barbell on Tuesday with DT. We're touching a barbell today, 
but on DT, we didn't go below parallel with that barbell. Today, we are going below parallel with that barbell. So all of it is intentionally and distinctly laid out in a way to help the athlete just make steady, consistent progress, not for days or weeks, but for a very long time. And so that, and let's look at um, the last couple below parallels. So this is Friday, five by five front squat, dedicated heavy day. Monday, three sets of 60 air squats. Go back the next week, we had a miserable leg strength stamina day that was had some 135 pound barbell front rack walking lunges. Those are absolutely terrible. We had some squat snatches, so we're getting a nice chunk of variance here. And then closing out the week on Saturday, a workout that my wife absolutely hated. And so, you know, that made me happy. This is, this is Saturday, August 26th, and this is interval day. It's three rounds of two minute, in a two minute window, max strict pull-ups, weighted. You choose the weight. Just do as many as you can with the weight that you choose in two minutes. You rest two minutes, then for two minutes, as many kettlebell snatches as you can. You choose the weight. Do some with one arm, switch to the other hand, do them with the other arm, switch back and forth, get as many reps as you can in a two minute window. You then take two minutes rest. In the next two minute window, how many toes to bar can you get? Two minutes rest. And in the final two minute window, the glorious two minute window, you hop on the air bike and you pedal your tail off for max calories in two minutes. You can do that three times. So it's a, it's a one to one work to rest ratio. You work for two minutes, you, should, you um, rest for two minutes, work for two minutes, rest for two minutes, and you go through that three times. So by the end of it, you will have done three two-minute windows of the pull-ups, the weighted strict pull-ups, three windows for the kettlebell snatch, three windows for the toes to bar, and you'll have hopped on that terrible bike three times as well. So now if we're talking just straight up time domains, this one-to-one -one work to rest ratio, two minutes on, two minutes off, is quite different than what we've done. Monday was long, 35 to 45 minutes. Tuesday was eight to 14 minutes. Wednesday, 14 to 20 minutes, depending on how long it took you. Friday, dedicated heavy day. And now Saturday, two minute windows, interval training. Covering our time domain bases really well. And what we have for modalities here, gym, we're gonna, even though you're, you're weighting the pull-ups, we're gonna call weighted pull-ups a gymnastics movement. Gymnastics, weightlifting with the kettlebell, gymnastics with the toes to bar, and then monostructural hopping on the bike. And so Monday we were on the rower, and we were on the rower for 1,500 meter efforts. Wednesday, we went out and pounded the pavement. We ran, so different modality, 400 meter efforts. And now on Saturday, we're on the bike, so yet a different modality. And we're on it for two minutes, okay? And two minutes is a similar time domain than, how long, than, the, than what we were running on Wednesday with the 400s, but, Wednesday was not interval training. That was a four round workout, mixed modality workout, back to back to back to back. So when you took off on those 400s, you weren't sprinting, that's for darn sure, because it was four rounds nonstop. It was a moderate effort, most likely. Well now, yeah, it's two minutes, but you had two minutes rest before you hopped on the bike, you're gonna get two minutes rest after you hop on the bike, and so this is gonna be a very different two minute. It's gonna be a burn the house down sort of a thing, if that's what you so desired. And then weighted strict pull-ups. I've been very vocal and honest about this. I think everybody's life is better with more strict pull-ups in it. And then on top of that, you had the wonderful variants of not just strict pull-ups, but weighted strict pull-ups, and everybody benefits from that. And this was a great day to implement some scaling as cool, some modifications, some figuring out what we're doing and why we're doing it and having it meet your needs because maybe just strict pull-ups are hard enough for you. And you're like, thanks for making a workout that I can't do. Like strict pull-ups are hard enough. Now you want me to do weighted strict pull-ups? You're out of your mind. That's okay. Scaling and modifying is cool. If you can do the weighted strict pull-ups, you do them. If not, maybe what made, you know, challenge yourself as much as you can 
while being safe and intelligent. And so if you couldn't do weighted strict, maybe you just do strict pull-ups for two minutes, see what you get. They don't have to be unbroken, hop on and off the bar, see what you get in two minutes. If that's not quite where you're at yet, again, the goal of trying to build some just pure strength without the kip, then give yourself the absolute lightest band in the world that allows you to hop up and makes just, you can do five pull-ups and they're really tough. Then you have to hop down and shake it off, put the band back on, you do another set of five, that, and maybe you do that three times in a two minute window. So you did three hard sets of five pull-ups, you know, maybe four sets. That's a nice little ratio right there. That's a day that you get stronger and you can make this workout meet you where you are. The kettlebell snatches, really cool. You've got that hip drive, there's a midline component, there's the coordination, accuracy, agility, and balance of the movement itself. And there's some beautiful single arm overhead stability for the shoulder. Just a beautiful movement, it's fantastic. Toes to bar, just midline, quite different than we've done previously in the week, because what do we do? On Monday we hit the GHD sit-ups, right now we're hitting the toes to bar. We go back last week, we had hollow rocks in there. Uh, and last week we also had toes to bar, but quite different. You had a chunk of work, you had to do 60 toes to bar strict. As many sets as it took you to do that. That was the beginning of the week. Now about 10 days later, here we are kipping those toes to bar. And then the two minutes on the air bike. Everybody wins three times through. And so that's it. And so again, people seem to enjoy these. What I would recommend you do is if you want to learn more about programming, write these workouts out on a piece of paper, take a screenshot, whatever makes sense for you to follow along with what I'm saying, but lay them out Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, rest day, Friday, Saturday, write out what the workouts were, and then have yourself CrossFit um, linchpin.com open or something like that so you can take a look back when I reference the previous weeks and see, okay, here's the time domain of this workout was. What have we been doing recently? Here's the loading. When did we pull from the ground? When did we go overhead? Was it with a power lift or was it with one of the Olympic lifts? Was it a fast lift? Or was it a slow lift? Were the loadings light, moderate, or heavy? What have the heavy days look like? Which ones are heavy days at a high heart rate? Which ones were classic? All that kind of good stuff. And then how would you categorize the movement? Because like I said, I put DT under the umbrella of heavy day at a high heart rate. For most people that I encounter, I think that fits really well. Maybe that does or doesn't work with your crew. That's irrelevant. As long as you have a way to categorize it and everything else you do, it'll help keep you on course as a programmer. So. Hopefully that helps. Have a great day, everybody, and we'll talk soon.